You know, for many years, the existence of dinosaur fossils was thought to be a problem for creationists and for the biblical account of creation. Hi, my name is Eric, and what you're about to see is a powerful seminar that combines the last 30 years of research done by Dr. Hoven. It's in a field called cryptozoology, which is the study of hidden animals. The seminar is titled, Dinosaurs and the Bible. Well, thank you for joining us. It's an honor to be here at Hiles Anderson College in Indiana. How many have been to one of my seminars before or seen one of the videos before? Okay. And how many never have? And how many do not understand the question so far? Good. Same three as yesterday. Good. Um, well, my name is Kent Hovind. I taught high school science for 15 years. And now, for the last 16 years, I've been an evangelist. I speak about 900 times a year now on the subject of creation, evolution, and dinosaurs. And I take the position that the Bible is literally true and scientifically accurate. And the evolution theory being taught in our schools in violation of the First Amendment is the dumbest and most dangerous religion in the history of planet Earth. No dumber idea ever. Anyway, I live in Pensacola, Florida. I have three kids, one of each. Got them all married and the dog died. Praise God, I made it. I'm home free. And so far, four grandkids, and that's definitely God's reward for not killing your own kids when you thought about it. So <clears throat> hang in there, it'll be worth it all. All my family lives right around me, and they all work in our ministry. So it's great having uh, kids that love the Lord. And a couple of them are back here at the back table back there, and one running the camera. We have in our backyard in Pensacola, Florida, Dinosaur Adventure Land. I like dinosaurs. Our phone number is 479-DINO. Our website is Dr. Dino. Dinosaur Adventure Land's phone number is 478-DINO-3466 for you alphabetically challenged folks. We like dinosaurs. We have thousands and thousands of visitors come. We've had probably close to 1,000 people get saved coming through our Dinosaur Adventure Land. Everything we do there has a science lesson and a spiritual lesson. We have a blast using dinosaurs for the glory of God. But you know, for the last 200 years, Christians have been extremely confused about where dinosaurs fit into the Bible. I heard a lady last night, I was talking to, witnessing to a lady at the hotel, she said, well, I got a friend that told me dinosaurs never existed. One guy told me, he said, well, the devil put those bones in the ground to fool us. <laughs> well, you're, you're going to look like a real idiot when talking to anybody with normal intelligence when you say something like that, okay? Yes, dinosaurs lived, but when did they live? Where do dinosaurs fit into the Bible? Here are two of my grandkids playing with one of the dinosaurs at Dinosaur Adventure Land. We have a wonderful time. Christians, though, often are very confused of where they fit in. What's happened, Christians have compromised the clear teaching of the Bible in order to accommodate the dinosaurs. That's why they have the gap theory or the day-age theory or progressive creation or theistic evolution. There's no need to do that. I'm going to give you the biblical view of dinosaurs here this morning. Now, this guy in National Pornographic, a Geographic, says, No human being has ever seen a live dinosaur. Now, just hold on a minute. Does he know that or does he think that? He thinks that. There is no possible way he could know something like that unless he talked to everybody that ever lived. Do you think he talked to Adam and Eve before he wrote that? Did he talk to you before he wrote that? No, okay. That's just not something you can know. The Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. It says, in six days, the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is. Well, if he made everything in six days, then Adam must have seen dinosaurs. It's just no two ways about it. And yesterday, we talked about seminar part two, what the Garden of Eden was like. It says, God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, <clears throat> and let it divide the waters from the waters. We talked about how God originally created the world with a canopy of water overhead, which all fell down at the time of the flood. It's gone now. And there was most of the water under the crust of the earth, which all came shooting to the surface when the fountains of the deep broke open. Psalm 24, the earth is the Lord's. He founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Psalm 136, he stretched out the earth above the waters. I don't know why Christians can read that and read right over it and not see what it's saying. The water that's now in the ocean used to be in the crust of the earth, but it all came shooting out when the fountains of the deep broke open. We cover much more on that on video number six. What caused the flood in the days of Noah? We call it the Hoven theory, so nobody else will get blamed for it. But from the creation 6,000 years ago up until the flood, 
4,400 years ago, the world was very different. During that time frame, the Bible says the people lived over 900 years. They really honestly did. Lived to be 900 plus. It's interesting, many ancient cultures have a legend about what they called the Golden Age. The Babylonians, the Sumerians, the Egyptians all talked about a time when man used to live to, near, to be nearly a thousand. Well, that's because it was really true. They really did live to be almost a thousand. And yesterday we covered how reptiles grow all their life. Reptiles never stop growing. So dinosaurs were big lizards that lived with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. They did not live millions of years ago. So the obvious question would be, well, did, did Noah take dinosaurs on the ark? They asked Billy Graham, were there dinosaurs on Noah's ark? Billy Graham said, no, nope, Noah's ark did not include dinosaurs because they were extinct by the time man got here. Oh, and I praise God for all the good Billy Graham has done, but he is dead wrong about that one. Okay? Dinosaurs on the ark? Well, I hope he kept the woodpeckers in a steel cage of some kind. That'll be important later. People say, dinosaurs on the ark. Now, Hoven, they're kind of big, aren't they? Yeah. The big ones were big, but the little ones were little. <laughs> See, Noah was 600 years old when he built that boat. Okay, he's probably smart enough to figure out, you don't have to bring the biggest ones you can find. Okay, you bring two babies. Just be sure to get a pink one and a blue one. That'll be important later, okay? <laughs> there are all kinds of reasons for bringing babies on the ark, okay? You bring babies because they're smaller. Well, duh. You know, the biggest dinosaur egg is smaller than a football. You bring babies because they weigh less, they eat less, they sleep a lot more. They're tougher. You know, kids fall down and bounce and get up and keep running. Adults fall down and break or lay there for a while. <laughs> Plus, you bring babies because after the flood, they're going to live longer to produce more offspring, and that's the reason you're bringing them. Why on earth would you bring big elephants on the ark? I mean, that would be stupid for multiple reasons, okay? Why would you bring big giraffes? Just bring babies of everything, young ones. God, and God told him to bring two of every sort. Not two of every species. Two of every sort. He said bring them after his kind, after their kind, after his kind, after his kind. I mean, the Bible's, you know, real clear on the topic. You bring the kinds of animals, not the species. And you only have to bring those in whose nostrils was the breath of life, and only those on dry land. Noah did not have to bring any fish on the ark. They had plenty of water outside, okay? He also did not have to bring any bugs on the ark because bugs don't have nostrils. Bugs breathe through their skin, through spiracles. Insects were not required to be on the ark. Insects can survive a flood just fine. Go any place where there's been a flood, after the water goes down, walk out into the mud and tell me the first thing you notice. Bugs bite a bazillions, right? Yeah, insects did not have to go on there. Some of them might have been on there, but they didn't have to be. Noah did not take 400 pairs of dogs on the ark. Noah probably never saw a chihuahua in his life. Why did somebody do that to the dog? All that special breeding to create a dog that's 100% useless. Noah probably just had a generic dog like my dog, Nikki. We had Nikki for 12 years before I knew what kind of dog it was. A friend of mine came to the house one day and he said, Hoven, you have got a full-blooded Canardly. I said, a what? He said, your dog, look at that, that's a Canardly. I said, it is? He said, well, look at it, man, you can hardly tell what kind of dog it is. Ah, <laughs> oh, yeah, full-blooded Canardly, yep. 